Okay, good. Give me a, give me a, um, a something I can, whatever you want. An 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 animated. Some something to to get a a a, a thumbnail off of. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Picked. Don't you dare! <laughs> don't you dare use that! <laughs> Welcome to Disparate World where an irresistible force meets an immovable object. I'm Mox, and that's Sakari. I don't know which way he is. He's, Assuming he's somewhere. you're pointing at me, hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and we compare and contrast the worlds of Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, and Ashes of Creation. Yes, indeed. Assuming we got our start right, here we go with this, this episode. Welcome to our friends and followers. Good to have you here. Absolutely. So... Uh, it is well known by this point that Ashes of Creation is going to have some extremely rich uh, player versus player, hereafter called PvP mechanics. I threw that in there just in case you're kind of new to uh, some of this gaming lingo, but we'll talk about PvP. We're always talking about player versus player. Uh, open world is very, uh, very heavy uh, in Ashes of Creation. The whole game seems to be built around it. So it's one of the things I'm decently excited about. Uh, we're going to uh, kind of unpack some of that. Um, they touched on it really uh, quite a bit here recently. Uh, in October 30th, there was a development update uh, where they showcased a castle siege. Uh, ordinarily in game, that's going to be a huge thing. 250 on 250, I think, is their plan. But a uh, smaller scale of it uh, and uh, showed us what it's going to look like. Uh, they were careful to make sure that we knew that the visual effects were slightly overtuned. You know, placeholder for now. Uh, they will be kind of scaled back to make things, you know, work, especially when you, I think if you're talking about 250 versus 250, it, yeah, that's going to matter. you can't have, like, effects that fill up half of a room when yes. you have 250 people casting them. Yeah, so it'll just be crazy. So, yeah, I think tuning it back is probably a good idea, but it was cool to see. I, um, I, I very much enjoyed seeing the footage. Um, and so that's kind I of I enjoyed watching that guy chase Stephen Sharif out of the castle <laughs> and keep on attacking him after it seemed like he was done with it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm not even remotely surprised. I think that was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. So, yes. um, yeah, so that's in the news lately. Um, we've got that going on, and we've known for a while we need to do an episode on player versus player. Now, the reason is because Mox has a bright and shining disposition to uh, player versus player combat in general. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I love <laughs> PvP. Yes. It was, he... it was it was apparently proven on Twitter this last week. So Yes, there might have been a, 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 a speech bubble that showed up um, at a very opportune moment. So I do want to just point out, you did say you love PvP in episode three. three. I love PvP. I love PvP. Did, did you? Uh, you don't understand sarcasm? <laughs> no, there's no such thing. All I heard was you love PvP. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right. So we're going to touch on uh, PvP this episode. Um, I think what what it's worth though is is for us to talk about our separate backgrounds. You know why we have the attitudes that we have. Obviously, we've been playing MMOs for a good number of years. Why uh, I'm right and you're wrong. It, it, sure, if you want to, if you want to think about it that way, absolutely, you go for it. Um, and then what we're going to do is, is having established that background, then talk about what we know about Ashes of Creation, and um, what we like from about you know that, and what we don't like about that. At least given what right. we know, subject of course to everything changing, we are. Uh, they love to remind us uh, pre. Uh, or, or in Alpha 1 at the time of this recording. So That's right, Alpha 1. Okay, so before we get into this episode, uh, Mox and I think it's very important that we uh, give you guys some resources, especially those of you who are new uh, to the whole Ashes of Creation thing. Now, obviously, we've been trying to bring ourselves up to speed as well. Uh, there's a lot to this. We are going to link down below a handful of videos, actually really helpful videos. One is uh, the Big Cheek Giant. He put out a, a Ashes of Creation Rewind on PvP. 
uh, Bustin has a, a good series of five minute breakdowns that he does on, and, and there were two of them um, that he did on, on uh, PvP and Ashes of Creation. Uh, Richie SH, there's actually three episodes that we're going to link from him. Uh, everything about castle and node sieges, uh, arenas and caravans, and of course the corruption mechanics. And then we're also going to link all of the uh, um, wiki articles uh, on the Ashes of Creation. So there's going to be a just a, a plethora of, of resources that you can look at if you want to do a deep dive into Ashes of Creation uh, player versus player combat. For the purposes of this episode, we're only going to touch on them very briefly, um, just to, to bring you know those who are brand new to this up to speed. Uh, but then we're going to get into really our analysis of things. Absolutely. I, I have to say, I'm very happy that there are so many uh, content creators out there uh, that are making content not only for Ashes but also for Pantheon that uh, can help uh, not only me but others uh, get up to speed with uh, things so it's it's really cool all right uh, my friend Mox uh, let us yes. uh, let us let us I would like for you please to take a minute and lie down on the uh, what is the sofa that they have at, at when you go to the shrink I want you to hit the shrink sofa and I want you are you trying to get me onto a casting couch to, Sakari? Uh, we should probably <laughs> cut that content. <laughs> um, Family-friendly show, sir. Um, but uh, you know, let's let's pretend like I'm I'm you know uh, trying You're to. You're the therapist. The, I'm the therapist. I'm gonna unpack all of your issues, and okay. very many issues you have, sir. <laughs> I'm like National Geographic. Yes, there's there's a lot. Yeah, there's a whole there's a whole volume. There's all volume three here of uh, of this stuff. So. Right. Uh, give us your history, you know, of the different uh, MMOs that you've been in. What has brought you to hate PvP so much, my friend? Let's right. help you. <laughs> Uh, my initial uh, foray into PvP uh, probably came in Dark Ages of Camelot. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but Dark Ages of Camelot has a lot of similarities to um, to Ashes of Creation, where there was large-scale PvP in there. Um, and I just learned in, in playing that game that I'm not very good at it. Uh, it is very something you have to be very twitchy to play um and it's just not my top skill set i am a strategist i am a uh, i'm very good at, at you know focusing and, and and completing tasks at hand i'm not good at jumping around and jumping through characters to make sure that their spell that they're casting will miss me and and all the things that that the pvp players do it's timing not your me. interrupts yeah, and not not just timing interrupts. Like you, like in some games, like you're you, you're the guys in front of you. You're about to cast a spell, and they jump through you, and the spell doesn't work because they're behind you now. Oh because yes. Because they could jump through you, which is a ridiculous mechanic. Like if you're gonna have that, like have collision. Like they mm -hmm. have to go around me at least, uh, not that they can jump through me. So there's there's lots of games that have things like that, and, and it's just something that I'm not good at. Um, uh, secondly, uh, I played World of Warcraft. And I actually leveled my very first uh, tunes in World of Warcraft on a PvP server. And I hated it. <laughs> Every oh. second oh. of it was awful. So what I'm hearing is that you got burned by World of Warcraft and you just can't you can't ever recover. Is that is that what this no, is? No, it's it's just <laughs> like it was just awful because and I'm going to I'm going to define two terms as I see them. Uh, first one is gankers. Uh, gankers are the types of players that feel as though like they're they're high level and they're bored. They're waiting for their war zone or whatever it is to pop. So they're going to go out into the world, in the open world and hunt down lobies and just kill them for the fun of it and i think that's that is ridiculous i've always felt that um higher level characters within a certain range like if we're three levels different you know you want to attack me like that that's like one thing but if we're if you're level 60 and i'm level 20 i have no hope right there's absolutely zero chance that i'm going to do anything to you other than I don't know, make your day because you killed me, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, uh, like, I, 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 out in the world of, of World of Warcraft, I got killed many, many times by people who were just bored and, and out to just make my day worse. And yeah. I did not like it. And it sounded um, like they, they succeeded. Yeah, <laughs> they did. Um, okay. And then you have your griefers. So griefers um, 
are like they take that to the next level so they they will either repeatedly kill you because they can and uh, you know there's nothing you can do about it uh, the only choice you have really is 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 trying to run away and usually that's difficult because they're chasing you um or you can log out yeah and and go do something else and you know so that's that's your choices so there's that and then the griefers also like to go into an area and like kill quest givers and and uh for in in terms of world of warcraft your they would kill your griffin uh masters uh so you couldn't fly away um uh, you know again just making it a, a difficult mm -hmm. situation now part of that does i do understand falls on the developers for not having a mechanic in there that says if you are you know, say seven levels or ten levels higher than, than another character, you cannot initiate combat with that character. Right. Like something, you know, mm -hmm. just prevent it. It prevents you. You can't do it. Now they they like they had an honor system, and you don't get any honor for killing somebody that that wouldn't be on the same par with you. So like so within the same like type of of range that a mob would give you experience, the the players would give honor. So you mm -hmm. you know so you know killing a lower level person doesn't give you honor, but apparently it, it gave them joy so it gave them jollies uh, yeah exactly so <laughs> right. i didn't i didn't care for that so and and that type of person is very prevalent in the pvp world in in my experience so the mm -hmm. type that that enjoy killing lobies and enjoy just just harassing other people uh in searching for videos for this uh you know we found uh some world of warcraft uh, footage it's, it's showing here that show like some guy that that actually put up on youtube his exploits in killing people that are afk people that are uh, super low level compared to them and it just is is ridiculous that they would actually think that this is a good thing i don't understand it yes so you're saying so, it's an issue with game design it's not it's, it's some it's, game design and some some um player um right. Um, I don't. I don't want to say it's player attitude or um, mentality. Player mentality probably right. is the best word. Yeah, yeah. So, so they should expect that player mentality and have accounted for it. Just to Which know it that it's going like to happen. And we're, and we're going to talk about it. Sounds like Ashes is doing something about it. Yes. So there is an upside to, to Ashes. I'm, I'm happy about that, but it just does, still doesn't make me happy about being. Ganked. You know, play a game. <laughs> it, no, it doesn't make me happy about playing a game that is essentially going to force me to PvP. Okay, and that's fair. So, I think that's completely fair. So, uh, it should be a choice. And you know my motto: friends don't let friends PvP. Yes, that is that is your motto. <laughs> my motto. The, the motto with you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so. All right. So, so, let's... so you, Mister, I love PvP. Uh, tell us your side of the story. Okay, so, uh, well, he says I love PvPs. It's actually not quite correct. Um, I might have oversold my position previously <laughs> with regard to, in, in our promo vid with regard uh, to PvP. So, the real truth about me, my friends, is that I am a reluctant PvPer. I, that's, how, that's how I would classify myself. Um, with regard to open world, I've gone into the instance PvP areas and have enjoyed myself you know, just being a, a PvP kind of thing where it's safe and, you know, when I leave this thing, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be ganked. I'm not going to be griefed. So, I, 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 Mox, I do understand where you're coming from. I have been and there myself. And you have a team behind you. You have yes. 4, 8, 12, 20, whatever, depending yes. on the size, you have those people there. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I got started in Star Wars Galaxies again. That was my number one. Um, uh, really, I was coming up through through the, the CU era. Uh, I'm not going to go into what all of that means, but um, the CU era was on a join the game and it wasn't there for that long. Really kind of got my teeth into it when they came out with that NGE thing, which really changed the whole game in, in the uh, new quite game considerable. experience. Whatever it was, <laughs> it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, and it really, I mean, they, they moved things kind of in the direction of World of Warcraft, but uh, all I remember from that was a lot of open world PvP, and it was just a mess. You couldn't tell where you were going. There was like whirlwinds of stuff. I just remember looking at this going, I don't want to PvP. This is just, the, talk about, uh, there was a good example of just stuff just being entirely overtuned. Um, I, I didn't want to do it from that, so I stayed out of it as a result of that. Um, Really, the next time I experienced PvP was, you know, in a brief stint I did with Ion waiting for Star Wars The Old Republic, but that was all instanced for the most part. Um, big 12-on-12 12 12 groups. 
uh, was doing a lot of like, uh, you know, faction control over the map. Uh, so a lot of times you were running around in a group of four and you had, you know, some balance and you were fighting other groups of four and it was, you know, safe instance, not a, not a big deal right. there. Um, Star Wars Old Republic, which, you know, where you and I met, uh, is really where I've done this the most. I leveled up in the in the earlier days on that on a PvP server. The uh, open world PvP factions had open, you know, and there was nothing to stop the gankers or the griefers. It was what it was. Um, I remember, and this is really where I got to do it, like starting a stealth class and really enjoying the ability to slip behind player lines, you know, enemy lines. I would go deep into enemy territory as a stealth class and, and scout things and look things over and find things and whatever, knowing that if I was detected, or if, you know, if it, in any kind of a way, um, I was dust. <laughs> and I remember the dust literally because I was on Tatooine when I did, you know, started doing that. So, um, but just the ability to go behind and, and see things and whatever added an element to exploration, which is really the kind of player that I am. I really enjoy that exploration. It made it dangerous. It right. made it, it, you know, there was a stealth, you know, I better stay undercover. I better hide behind rocks kind of a thing. Um, so I enjoyed that, and there was there was some open world PvP that happened that I wish I had gotten into more. Um, but large group, large group on large group, I think is always fun in the open world because you have somebody there to pick you up when you fall, all that kind of stuff. Usually, right. Um, what was always the challenge, of course, was when you would run into that one guy, <laughs> right? And then it's like, Doo -doo, you know, like, oh, you know, you're standing in there, the the the, the tumbleweed goes across the road, kind of a thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, and, and you decide if who's going to pull the trigger first and whatever, whatever right. happens, happens, right? And, and you may be dust again. You may, you know, you may survive. But let me, let me question you here. If you're out in, in, in a SWOTOR world and you, and you have somebody or a group of somebodies that are coming and, and harassing you, you can call in friends and they can get there quickly. Yes, and that would happen if somebody was out there ganking you over or griefing. I think is what you would you just just making it so that you couldn't progress in the game. Right. Yeah, word would go out. Say, hey guys, so, we've got somebody out here, and everyone else would show up to help out. So here we are in the ashes world, and there is no quick travel, or there's very little quick travel, like yeah. only within. Um, nodes. You're mapping to a different spot. Yeah. Um, people so have to make the journey. Your is is long way out. Yes, I, I imagine so. Um, it may not be that, you know, because I don't know quite how vast the map is going to be, you know, how far out from a node you can be and still within its zone of influence. Yeah. But I imagine that people would have to come out from the node, assuming they're all hanging around in town. Right. Um, so, well, we, we can get more into it. But yeah, generally yeah. speaking, you know, I, you know, there's going to be plenty of that uh, in Ashes. So um, now that you kind of know our backgrounds, let us uh, let's uh, get into that. Okay, so Ashes uh, of Creation, lots of PvP. This is going to be, there's going to be a lot of it. Um, I, I, I thought I would, since he, he loves to talk about it so much, make Mox give us the breakdown <laughs> of what PvP features there are in Ashes of Creation. Now remember, we're going to keep this epic brief all down in, in below in the description. That's where you can go and dig, you know, into the stuff to your heart's content. Right. There's going to be plenty of links. All right, so in Ashes, it's our understanding that there is going to be open world PvP, um, which is going to be you're just out there and in your group and you're, you know, you encounter another group or, or whatever and you, uh, you're you going to fight them. Also worth mentioning at this point that Stephen uh, Sharif has mentioned that their balancing is going to be very much a group balancing mm -hmm. not a 1v1 balancing where all the other games i've played it's always been a yeah you know, we want to make sure everybody has an equal chance to kill everybody um i believe that you um you refer to it as a rock paper scissors um uh, type of, of yes. situation so uh where uh class a uh will generally always uh Go, you know, beat class B, uh, given equal skill, I would assume. Like, if mm. somebody's really derpy at class uh, A, they may lose, but class A generally will always beat class B, class B will always beat class C, and then it goes kind of around in a circle where, uh, you know, everybody has their, their kryptonite, so to speak. Right. Um, so, uh, so that's balancing, and it will be balanced around a group. So two groups come together, they should be fairly well matched if they're of the same level and skill. 
Um, so within the open world PvP, you're going to have your combatants, your non-combatants, and corrupted. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and, and kind of the effects of that. Um, but basically, you can you can flag yourself for PvP or not, and there are various mm -hmm. um, penalties and, and bonus benefits for for being in those flag states. Uh, with the exception of corrupted, I don't think that's ever really a benefit to being corrupted, uh, but it's out there, and we will talk a little bit more about that uh, going forward. Um, you there are there are going to be bounty hunters out there that can that can look for these corrupted people and they can actually track them and find them so that's going to be an interesting uh you know part of the open world pvp where people decide you know hey i'm going to become a bounty hunter i believe there's going to be some sort of quest involved to mm -hmm. to become that they have to be part of a military node so there's there's kind of rules that, that govern all this stuff but it's it is it is to say the least it's interesting uh, and different than them than any other system that i've heard of so i, I give steven's vision uh, some kudos for that um, there's going to be caravans, which are basically mobile um, instanced PvP zones uh, where no. you're moving. They're not instanced. It's it's open world. Oh, that's uh, right. That's meant. Pseudo okay. instance, I think, is the pseudo yeah. instance. Well, you're right. So it's pseudo instance. Like so, basically, you got this caravan moving along, and it's it it is a PvP zone as it's moving along, but it's not instanced. Yes, um, and uh, so that's going to be interesting. Like again, a, a, a neat you can a mechanic where um, you've got these. Uh, you know the, these goods moving from point A to point B. You got people protecting it, people that might want to attack it. Uh, and we did learn this week uh, that uh, there will be some sort of schedule to those. Uh, the caravans will will operate on some sort of known schedule to, I guess, to help encourage the attackers to attack and the defenders to defend. Uh, if yeah. everybody does their their caravans on off server times, then kind of what's the point, right? Yes, and those are castle sieges. I mean, there are big, you know, big things that are owned, and and they'll move all along from a castle siege. I think those are going to be um, on that uh, schedule, and probably right. some of the larger node ones. There will be some, but I think you can, if you want to, schedule an off uh, off scheduled caravan, some some other, you know, obscure time. Uh, but then right. it's subject to more risk, and it's out. You know, it's got a different path and all kinds of things to it. So yeah, it's... yeah. So there, there is, a, there is a way to move it, but it's not the ones that are that are kind of official caravans, so mm -hmm. to speak. And lastly, there's going to be node and castle sieges, uh, mm -hmm. which are going to be up to 250 people per side, uh, which is going to be just an epic, if nothing else, to see that and and participate. Say that I participate in something like that. I guess might be worth it. Um, but after I lose my stuff the first time, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> You'll be and, done. And yep. you will never hear the end of it. I'll be like, you owe me 25 barrels of, of barley. That's a lot of beer, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess well, I know what you're picking. <laughs> I will need it after losing my 25 barrels. Yes, there you go. All right, so uh, now that we kind of define that stuff, uh, let's talk about what we what we like and what we don't like about the Ashes of Creation PvP system. So uh, let's start off with you, Sakari. What what's the top thing that you that you are in favor for that that, that excites okay. you about this game? Okay, so uh, so here's I'm gonna say this. I don't know if this excites me or not, but I think we do need to dig deeper into it, and I think it's it's worth having it in the like column, and that is the corruption system. So um, without trying to dig into this, I don't know how you how you avoid it, right? If you are a a player that enjoys griefing and ganking, and you're out there and you're gonna just go get people, and you can, you can open combat on anybody if you want to, whether they're flagged for PvP or not. The ones that are flagged for PvP, they signed up for it, right? That's what they wanted. They they said yes, I, I'm okay with getting killed, uh, and they were gonna try to kill you, so we're we're good there. But if you open up combat on somebody who is not flagged for PvP, you're gonna be flagged as a corrupted player. You're There's a murderer. A you're a murderer. Yes, <laughs> shame on you. Uh, so. Uh, and there's some there's some drawbacks to that. Um, the the the, the greater the level disparity between you and whoever you killed, the more corrupted you are. There's levels of corruption. And the only way out of corruption is to get killed, by the way. Um, and the higher your level, the more you have to get killed. And maybe three or four times before you get out of being corrupted. So it's kind of like this death mark. You're wanted in 12 systems or whatever uh, <laughs> over your head, right? Um, and the bounty hunters can come find you. if they, And I think the bounty hunters can, can level up to the point where they can turn on, hey, I want to track targets. Hey, there you are in their mini map, and they're going to come find you. So you're you're always having to look over your shoulder. Um, when you do get killed, there is like 
four times the penalty. Um, you know, three or four times, I think, is is the agreement, right? Marks, mm -hmm. if you yeah. have this right, uh, of of the loss. You know, there is a an experience loss that you can ex that you will experience in greater uh, in greater magnitude, and there are, are materials and even items that you will have on your person that you can drop. Um, right, corrupted people will be the only, or corrupted characters will be the only thing ones that can actually drop items. Everyone yes. else will have the chance of dropping materials or um, goods some percentage that, are, of that have been processed to make stuff. Like those can also drop, I believe, but a finished item cannot drop from a normal uh, combatant or non-combatant. Right. So you, you, there's there's risk to being corrupted. Now, you can go do that if you want to. They haven't made it so that you can't. But if you're going to go out there, and if you're going to do that, there's some risk involved, right? And obviously, that's that's risk and reward. There's a lot more risk to being corrupted. Right. Um, now, obviously, they also want to incentivize. If you're the player that suddenly is getting shot, um, if they've incentivized you to actually turn around and fight back so you if you just allow this person to kill you and then be corrupted as a result now we'd spoken before this uh, this episode it may it may be worth it if you've got nothing on you to take it and at least hit them with a corruption uh mark right because right. if you've got we, nothing on you right we talked uh, there we want to talk about the dynamic death penalty system they have yes. because it is that it's it's dynamic and i actually this is one of the things i really like because um and you talked about um losing experience it's actually not experience loss it's experience debt okay so you cannot de-level uh which is yes. was a feature a, a very well-known feature in everquest yes um, where you could de-level de um, <laughs> so um you will go into debt though so if you uh and then in order to um to kind of get uh, to get back on track, you have to, to you know earn some Make experience and and, right. and pay that back. Um, so while you're in that debt, um, you are at a penalty for your use of items and your and your attack abilities and such. There is there is a lowering of that, which kind of is interesting because you're in this debt and you're you're less able to fight, but then you have to. You have to go and fight and get experience to get it back, so it's going to make it challenging. So, uh, dying is is going to have some sting, and that's that is a good thing in, in these games. Yeah. Um. So when you when you die, you uh, so you incur experience debt. Uh. You lose raw materials or or materials that are used to make other things. Um. And then there's three levels of of penalty that uh, that happen. Uh. So of those, so in your experience debt, if you're a non-combatant, you take you're the baseline. You take a hundred percent of the, of whatever the penalty is going to be. And they haven't given us exact numbers. Mm -hmm. Um. If you're a combatant, that gets halved. So you only take half of the penalty. So that's where Sakari was saying that you yes. could uh you may want to flag. Um, or you yes. may not, depending on what you have on you, you may make that decision. It's, it's going to be... If you have material, so, so, so really the implication of this is, if you are out gathering and you start getting shot, turn around and fight, because you will lose, if, if you die, you will lose, A, if you win, you don't get, you know, corrupted or anything, you, you've got to tech first, so there you go. And you keep 100% of your materials, but if you do get killed, you will lose less fighting back than you will if you just let them kill you. Right. So you are incentivized actually to fight back. Yeah, because there was a, a mindset that, you know, well, well, why would anybody flag if they, you know, if they could get corrupted, you mm -hmm. know, or, or whatever. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so you lose less if, if you're flagged. Now, sometimes that you may not matter. You may just be like, oh, I don't feel like dealing with this or I'm not carrying anything, but I want this person to get stuck because he's 15 levels higher than me. So you choose to not flag. If you mm -hmm. don't flag, then that person kills you. They're going to get some stuff, but it may only be a little bit of corn or, or hay or wood or whatever it was you were gathering. It may not be important, but if you're carrying gold or diamonds, mm -hmm. then, you, then, then it might be worth it to save um, a portion of that and, and flag up. Um, once you're corrupted, though, like that's where it's like it stings. If you're if yeah. you're corrupted. Uh, you will lose three to four times the experience and three to four times the materials uh, when you if you get killed. Yes. 
that hurts. Yeah, that's a lot. So if you're carrying a thousand items and and the the base is fifteen percent, let's say, then a non combatant would lose one hundred and fifty. A combatant would lose seventy five. A corrupted person would lose between four hundred fifty and six hundred items. Yes, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> like that's a crazy lot. And then not to mention, there there you're going to be going in this huge experience debt mm-hmm. that. You know that you then add like forty to fifty thousand. If let's say the base is ten thousand, you're losing forty to fifty thousand instead of ten thousand. Um, or no, my math is wrong here. Thirty to forty thousand, I guess it would be. Um, but even so, that's still a lot in comparison. So, yeah. um, so dynamic death penalty is is interesting, and it uh, gives you the attacked person the choice as to what route you want to take. And I, I do like that. And you better think quick. Right. I mean, I, I would recommend having a plan before you go out to gather. Because I guarantee you the gankers are going to have a plan before they go out to gank. They're going to have nothing on them or stuff that they can afford to lose. You're right. So so yeah, you're going to see that. But, but it's good, though. If you, have the, if you have the chance of dropping an item, you know, usually a ganker type is going to overgear and then go out and hit people that are undergeared. That's what, you know, they want to get right. the kills. And so if you... If you try to gank this person and somebody ganks you and you could lose that, that epic sword, right? Or that, that legendary, you know, chest piece or something. I mean, there's oh, a, yeah. It could, it, I mean, it could hurt. So, um, but hey, I mean, that's, that's risk versus reward. If, and that's, that's kind of how it works. So It makes you wonder, will the gankers have a set of throwaway gear that they go out with then? And like, right. it's always uh, go to the bank. Or warehouse, whatever they call, I think they're calling them warehouses. Go to the warehouse, drop mm-hmm. your, drop all your valuable stuff off, and I'm gonna go out and gank in my greys. Right. The gray, the gray gankers. That's gonna be their guild name. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um. So uh, there's more to this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to put on this list is a, some something that I like is that, uh, you know, this makes the world a very interesting place to be. Ordinarily, you know, PVE, you know, player versus environment combat there's artificial intelligence that has to run on the on the mobs that you're running into um this is actual intelligence and so things are very dynamic out there there's a, there's a lot of, of interesting things uh, to, i think to to fight against uh, in that way and then also one of the things we wanted to mention at least on my list is that caravans are as we call them earlier pseudo instances um right because it's a traveling pvp zone you know a specialized zone that you can get into and you pvp in that zone that's an instance uh but this one travels and i don't know if you once you're engaging that if you can get out of it and disengage i don't know i haven't you know i need to do some more research on that um but once you're you're involved then it's a traveling zone so what happens is that as it moves along the terrain changes and I imagine that as it moves on from a node to node or from a castle to a node or whatever, there may be terrain situations that are more advantageous for a an ambush or, you know, a, a better place to, to hunker down and defend. And so you have some dynamic world change there uh, along that route. And I like that. I mean, instance PvP, as I've, as I've experienced it, has always been a very known, very understood map with a very set, specific set of rules right rules of engagement and everybody knows how how and what and when to do things whereas a changing map as you go along in my opinion is going to be is going to be very much a, it's it's a new idea to me and and i think very very cool so definitely worth mentioning all right so now that we've talked about the things we like let's touch on a few things that we don't like um for me at the top of the list is warehouse resource losses on a node siege Um, i can't go on a vacation and still protect my stuff if my pc is at home so am i gonna have to go to the beach and take my gaming pc with me so that i can protect my my stuff of course why would you even go to the beach here go if you want to go to the beach my friend you need to go to the beach in game Problem oh, solved. <laughs> okay, problem solved. You're right. No, no, no. I, so I think this is I think this is true, given what I don't know. I, I don't quite know how to speak to this. Um, maybe you can withdraw all your stuff from a warehouse and put it in your own personal storage, and thus it is not subject to that kind of a loss. Uh, maybe th- maybe a warehouse is your storage. In that case, you don't have a choice, right? It's just in the warehouse. You right. do lose some percentage if the node is destroyed, for instance. So. 
I don't know. I think there's just too much that that I personally need to need to learn more about this to to be, I think be able to speak to that intelligently. Right. It's just saying that we like we've heard that this loss is going to occur. Like, right. and so how a lot of the, our dislikes and our likes are going to come down to implementation. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. how does do the devs implement this stuff? For example. The enemy of the state, which is one you have on there as, as a dislike. Um, I don't dislike the concept, but I agree with your points here. So yes. tell us about why you, you dislike the enemy of the state, at okay. least what we know of it. Oh, yeah. So enemy of the state, just in case you uh, need to be caught up and are not aware of it, if, if there is a mayor who decides he doesn't like someone who is not a member of his node, i.e. that person is not a hasn't placed membership or, or citizenship in that city that as it's growing, he can declare you the enemy of the state, which means you are now flagged for PvP, whether you want to be or not, to every member of that of that node. Now, I imagine this is probably going to end up being reserved for the type of situation where there's a guy out there who's just giving your node grief, and it's it's just all right. It's time. To, it's timed. Okay, fine. Beep. Goodbye. <laughs> it's kind of like a nu- as Bilbo nuclear says, option. you have been labeled a disturber of the peace. Yes, it was like we, we all we all look at you funny as you go through town. <laughs> right. That kind of guy. So, um, yeah. Um, what I'm worried about, though, and again, this comes down to implementation. I think, Marks, that's a very good point. Um, it's the implementation of it. Is that too much power in the hands of a mayor to say? Uh, hopefully he can't say, okay, I, I kick you out of the town. If he can excise you from the town and then do that, my goodness, why, who would ever run against him? How right? dare you run against me? Yes, I, so I, I kick you out of the town and, you know, and, and I imagine that surely that's got to be too much power. But I worry about that. The ability for a mayor to say, um, you, I, I'm going to squash you like an ant. I hereby direct this tier six node against that guy. And by the way, I fly on a dragon so I can go scorch him from the air while everyone else is pounding on him, you know, from down <laughs> right. below. There's, I mean, that's a lot of power in the, in the hands of a mayor. So I, yeah. I am going to keep an eye on that implementation to make sure that this, or well, who knows, it's going to be what it is. But this enemy of the state thing isn't, doesn't turn out to be quite an awful experience. Right. Um, and as far as you are concerned, I guess any, can anybody do an enemy of the state or only a military node? I don't know. I'm going to have to so look into that. That's a good question. That. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, speeding along here, um, for me, the last thing that, that I'm going to mention that, that I dislike is the impact on player housing. But that has actually been minimalized because uh, if a node gets destroyed, I lose my house. But the template of how I had everything set up is going to be saved. So yes. it's more annoying than than a bad thing at this point because they they are at least saying hey, you can just go to your other your next house and you know push a button and magically everything will go where it goes. Um, you know that's fine. You know I can live with that. But uh, you know st- again still the whole uh, you know I go away for a weekend and come back and I have no no and you're apartment. Homeless. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're, oh, no, I'm, I'm homeless, homeless in, in ashes of creation. So. No, dang you. Yeah. So yeah, so. and then and then you've got to go find a new node place citizenship you know you know right. find a spot right if you're uh because they if they're successful in destroying a node now they can raid the countryside and now your 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 uh, freehold plots are available for the taking so i mean they could just level your whole thing and you have to go yeah. find a new spot you know that's going to be an interesting an interesting i think it's necessary though because that's how you clean out the world that you don't want these people that have been on the server once you know and played for a few months and then they never come back again to be chewing up all the real estate so you've got to have some way to clean that out i think this is a good way to do that so there's pl- bonuses and negative to to the loss of player housing as a result of pvp right um but again you know i'm with you it's going to be very inconvenient to not have to go find a new spot you know especially if you had a, a prime real estate you know it was right next to a, a a lake so you've got the the water feeding your your crops and all kinds of things i mean it's there's a lot to it um, one of the things I had on the list um, was, I, I mentioned flying mounts a moment ago. Um, do you think, Mox, that if you were a, le- a guild leader, and man, those flying mounts are looking juicy, right? Only guild leaders of like tier six, like metropolises, metropoli, met- met- metropo, whatever the, the, the plural of metropolises yeah. is. Um, well, I don't or, think you'd be a leader of, of, a, <laughs> of, of multiple. That would be a bad thing. Like, yes. That would be an empire then. Yeah, or, or, or a castle. Right, yeah, right. whatever you are. You know, you're the king, yeah. you know, of the castle kind of a thing. There's, there's only a, a handful of people 
that are actually going to have the giant dragon mounts as long as they hold those positions. Right. That's an awful lot of incentive to use your guild. Hey, guys, there's... Uh, by the way, there's now 500 of us. We should go take the castle, right? Yay! Lead the charge. If they take the castle, you get you get the the bonus, and they're subject and, to all of the risks. And you get to decide how much taxes you're going to charge everybody. Yes, yes, <laughs> and you get all the decisions, right? But then, but then your poor guild is the ones having to pay the the cost of taking this this wretched castle, the deaths involved, and you know all of that kind of stuff. So, I have lots of issues with the flying mounts. Uh, this is one of the things, and I'm glad you yeah. brought it up because I hadn't thought about it. Because given the mentality, and again, and I know I have a preconceived mentality of, of PVPers, um, that uh, I think this is absolutely something that can and will happen. Hey, folks, just as a reminder, uh, don't forget on our website and in the description of this uh, video, there is a link to our Discord server. Please join us on there. We would love to, to talk with you and, and debate with you. Even if it's about PvP, I will join in and, and, and flag up and, and have a chat with you, and, and you can tell me why I'm wrong. Um, I, that's something I always hear, so I'm used to it. Um, yes, he does. So. I keep him I keep him up. <laughs> so, speaking of PvP, Sakari, we PvP in our comments in our videos every week uh last week we asked uh how long it took you to get your pc that you had ordered uh please let the fans know uh, how long that actually took yes drum roll the answer to last uh, episode's com quest was five days i actually expected I... it to be a lot sooner but it turned out to be five days yes <laughs> Yeah, weekend got in there, didn't sure it? Sure beats three weeks. That's sure. <laughs> you got you got notification that it was going to be there on Friday, and they disappointed yes. you, didn't yes, they? Yes, they did. They took the weekend. How dare they? <laughs> How dare they, yes. It was amazing, though. Three days. I was impressed. Uh, yes. That must have been, like, sitting in the next uh, town over from you. Yeah. All right, so this week's ComQuest uh, is uh, about Ashes of Creation. Uh, Sakari, uh, we want to know what is the first race you'll play. Don't answer now. Mm-hmm. But I'm dying to. Sit. I know you are, but don't. Uh, the correct answer will get pinned. So uh, please uh, comment and let us know. Uh, also, let us know what you think about this this episode, uh, our discussion about PvP. Um, you can find us on Facebook uh, at facebook.com slash disparate worlds. You can find us on Twitter at disparate worlds, and our website is disparateworlds.org. Yes, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Definitely, we appreciate you having been here. Uh, that'll be it for us this episode. Uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, do drop a comment. Uh, give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Uh, we would like to remind you, hit the notification bell. That is also important. That way you will not miss upcoming episodes. Take care of yourselves, my friends. Remember always to be immovable in your principles and irresistible in your passions.